Good evening YouTube. So I thought I'd try doing a voiceover for a change. Uh, this is a flight from about a week ago. Uh, it was um, flying out in the uh, Flatlands, Nottinghamshire with uh, Rio T wing. The trike here is an MK Merlin trike. It's a Bailey four-stroke engine, so not the most powerful, but lovely and quiet and smooth. It the flight didn't go exactly according to plan, as you'll see, uh, but there's hopefully a bit of interest there, and also, um, well, you'll get to see how how we land out with one of these um, sub-70 powered hang glider trikes. So it was a freezing cold day, uh, clear blue skies, although there was fog um, around in patches hanging over the ground. Uh, very little wind, so basically nil wind in the morning. Um, forecast to just pick up a little bit as they went on, but uh, not a lot of wind at all. I'd already had an absolutely beautiful flight that morning, uh, so the um, video for that is um, in the link down below as well, so have a look at that. But yeah, beautiful flight, flying up above on the edges of the mist and um, playing around in the edges of the wispy bits. But on that flight, I had noticed that um, while I was in the air, the um, fog bank started to creep in towards the um, towards the edge of the runway, and um, I'd already heard from a friend that um, at a nearby airfield uh, they were completely blanketed in fog and couldn't fly, couldn't see anything. Um, so I was aware that there was um, that the fog uh, could be an issue, and as I say, cut cut my previous flight slightly short uh, because of it. On the other hand, you can see that um, actually the fog banks a fair way away from the um, the runway here. You can see it in the distance there. It has actually moved further away from the airfield than it was when I'd flown earlier in the day. And um, considering the sun had come up higher, heating up the ground, we're kind of expecting it to probably burn off. So it sort of seemed reasonable that yeah, the fog's moved away. So I was actually expecting that um, I'd have a completely clear flight. So seem good and so I thought I'd um, fly around a bit and have a bit more bit more fun skirting in the edges of the mist. Now as this was a check flight on the new wing I was uh, just checking it didn't have a third in it. So we'll just fast forward on a little bit, um, but actually you can see um, there's a couple of uh, windmills uh, just down there, wind turbines just down there on the left, uh, one of them turning and one of them not turning. Uh, they're actually quite a good landmark for um, finding your way back to the airfield as um, we'll see later. You can also see the uh, power station chimney sticking up through the mist over there in the distance. So it kind of gives you an idea that the, the mist um, doesn't go up a very high altitude. It's not sort of very deep, um, but it is very dense. Um, you definitely, you can't see very much when you're in it, so you really don't want to get into it. So we we'll just skip forwards a little bit here. Um, you can see I was having uh, quite a lot of fun playing around in the wispy bits on the edges of the clouds. Uh, trying to get the sun behind me so I can get a uh, circular rainbow one of the Brock inspectors. Um, again, if you have a look at the other video, you'll, you'll see that better there. So after having my bit of fun, I decide it's time to go back over to the airfield. So head across, back over to there. And um, yeah, so this is where I start to realise that um, I might have made a bit of a mistake and I can't actually see the airfield anymore. Now if you look down in the bottom right hand corner of the A-frame there, you can just about make out um, those wind turbines. So they don't show up very well in the video, but I could see them quite well from the air. Um, so I knew where I was, I knew pretty much where the runway was, and those wind turbines are just to the north of the runway. Um, so that fog bank has obviously come in and is now completely covering the runway. Um, so I've got a decision how about what to do. 
obviously at this point for me the adrenaline's now starting to kick in uh, because I'm in an uh, unexpected situation here. Uh, now the first thing to do in this kind of situation is not to panic and um, just like start thinking fear of things carefully so first thing here is I'm safe where I am like I've got quite a lot of fuel on board I could probably stay in the air for at least another hour if not even longer so there's no particular urgency to do anything um, but at the same time I've seen that the mist bank has advanced not retreated as I thought it was doing so there's a risk that it's going to carry on coming in further and blocking off more and maybe this um, gap that I'm flying around over could fill in quite suddenly so I really do want to get myself back down on the ground uh, so I fly around for a bit longer over the over the airfield so I'm hoping it's going to clear but it's it seems like it's if anything the mist is advancing further and um, I don't think that's going to happen at this point my friend on the airfield could hear me flying around over the top uh, but uh, the mist was um, just too thick he couldn't really seem to see the windsock which was only about half the way down the runway so there was absolutely no question of um, just trying to fly through it or, or trying to land through it that was that would have been incredibly dangerous um, so I made the decision that um, I was going to fly a bit to the north into the clearer air try and pick a good, a good field and then um, do a landing in that field. It's actually a question I get asked uh, quite often actually about, about hang gliding and um, with these um, sub-70 powered hang gliders is um, yeah sort of well, what happens if you have to land out for some reason if your engine stops in, in context of a powered one or um, some other reason as in this case or with a hang glider just if you you run out of thermals and you need to need to get yourself back on the ground so it's sort of um, it's kind of similar process in all these kind of things or similar similar thought process now obviously the advantage I've got in this case is that I still have an engine which is running well so make make the most of that um, but more generally um, if you're if you're looking to land out uh, the first thing you sort of do is um, well the first thing to think actually is that you you probably have a reasonable amount of time actually because um, it is it there's a pretty good sink rate um, so unless unless your engine's failed a very low level and you've got to really get in an emergency um, you've mostly got a little bit of time to think about things actually and to consider what you're going to do and certainly if you're on hang gliding cross country you're sort of always always looking for the next landing anyway so what I do is I'll sort of like while I'm still high or quite a long way away I'll be I'll be looking at the general area so looking for looking for the sort of areas which are more promising or areas which are less promising so obviously if it's built up there's uh, there's houses or there's an industrial area or it's a forest uh, you know there's there's not going to be any good landings in that area um, so you're basically looking for for flat farmland and and then you start looking at well within that area of flat flat-ish farmland uh, what have we got within that so uh, first thing is to consider um, what well, what's basically in the field is it if, if it's a crop field um, you want to avoid it so for a start it's in the case of landing on wheels it's it's probably going to tangle up the wheels and tip the thing over so very bad news um, even if you're foot landing you don't want to land in crops and you don't want to do it anyway because it's it's going to cause problems and problems with the farmer and you don't want to do any damage to, to the land so you're looking you're basically looking for empty fields to land in um, with these and especially in the winter uh, when the ground's very wet uh, it's it's going to be a bad idea to be landing in a ploughed field because that's again it's it's the wheel that's going to stop the wheels almost immediately and it's probably going to tip over and, and it's not going to be good so um so basically what what you're really looking for is a is a grassy field um and then you really want a grassy field that doesn't have livestock in it as well so 
as I say, in this situation, I've actually got an engine, so I've got quite a lot of luxury. I can I can cruise around for for some time looking for suitable fields. So from quite a distance out, actually, I'd spotted a sort of area of some some green fields, and so I headed over that way. And then, as you get closer, you start to identify to sort of zoom in on well, which is going to be the one that's best to land in. So besides the surface of the field. What you're also going to be looking for is the terrain as well. So um, one of the main things is slope. So especially on a hang glider, but also with the, with the trikes as well. Um, even even what looks like quite a gentle downslope from the air can actually turn out to be quite a lot more slope than you're expecting. And you get in that situation where you get into ground effects and you find it just doesn't want to come down and it carries on floating on and on forever and um, maybe you start running out of field so so you avoid anything which if you can see a downslope from from when you're high it will probably be a worse downslope when you're on the ground so we're looking at slope we're also looking at what's around the field so if there's any power lines if there's any tall trees tall buildings that doesn't rule the field out it just means that you've got to plan your approach appropriately and you've got to make sure that the field is still big enough even when you consider that you're going to have to be coming into it from a bit higher. And then the final thing to look out for is um, just considering the practicalities of how you're going to get out of it afterwards. So preferably you want to be somewhere close to a road. Obviously don't land in something like a military base. It, it's, it's happened and people have been arrested for it. Um, don't land in well and anything which looks like it's going to give you a real problem to get out of but to be honest that's always got to be second in your mind the the, the first thing is always going to be safety so land at the safest spot first if that means you've got a bit of a walk to a road well so be it now that's exactly what i've been doing here so as i've been flying along the edge of this uh, fog bank i've been been looking out ahead i've spotted um, several promising looking fields from distance several big green fields and you can see them up ahead now we've actually reached the um, first possible option uh, we're just flying over it now so from a distance this one looked quite good um, but now i've got closer to it i can see that it's got sheep in it it's also got a bit of a down slope on it so it's not great the one just across the left doesn't have any livestock in it um, but it's a little narrow it's down sloping as well it'd be something that you could use if you had to uh, but there's actually much better options ahead the one just vanishing under our right hand side has got sheep in it as well so we'll rule that one out uh, the smaller ones off to the left are just a bit small um, again if it was an emergency we'd be considering them but it's not so we're not there's this massive one off to the right, but that's got freshly planted crop in it. It's also, um, you can see some puddles of standing water, so it's probably really boggy as well. So we definitely don't want to do that one. But this one we're flying over right now basically looks perfect. So let's have a better look at this. So I can see it's big, fairly flat, slight upslope in the interwind direction it's grassy there's no livestock i uh, can't see any puddles of standing water there's this house and there's also a power line at the bottom edge which i'll have to clear but as i say that's just something to bear in mind on the approach it uh, doesn't rule it out at all so it's looking pretty good Now one of the advantages of having an engine uh, compared to being on the hang glider is that you can have the chance to have a good, really good look at the field before you commit to landing in it. So um, I'm setting up a dummy approach here, aiming to fly for a little bit high, but it gives me a really good way of uh, checking out the field exactly what it's like. Another crucial consideration is wind direction. So obviously we always try and land into wind. Um, when we're landing on airfields, then sometimes we're a little bit cross. Uh, but with these outlandings, it really makes sense to get it as into wind as you possibly can. Like landing a hang glider, you always try and be as precisely into wind as you can. So you've got a few things you can look out for for that. You can look for things like flags or um, leaves on trees moving or waves on the on a lake. Really. The 
best thing is smoke if you get any smoke if you can see smoke that's really good and in this case I have the wisps of mist which are telling me that wind direction so those are really useful the other thing is if there's no visual cues you just do a 360 and see which way you're drifting over the ground and the other consideration with wind is if there's anything upwind of you. So although these other fields in front of this one uh, could be possible, um, they do have obstructions upwind of them, so they're more likely to have turbulence. So I'm very keen now that this is definitely in my field. I also want to get into it before any of this mist moves across any further and risks blocking it off. So I've flown a pretty tight approach here. I've entered the field over the downwind corner. I'm really pulling speed now, so pulling, diving in towards the ground. I came in quite high, but that's fine. And now I'm going to push out and really try and slow this down as much as I can before the touchdown. So as it touched down there, I pretty much had the bar out, pressing on the front strut at about the same time as the wheels touched the ground so it stopped pretty quickly but actually it rolled reasonably well on this stuff um, so then I'm gonna taxi over to the side of the field and um, actually I found it was pretty boggy over towards this side of the field so almost immediately yeah you can see me looking down there and see that it was uh, starting to sink into the sink into the mud now, although I'd picked out this field as being the safest field to land in, not the one next to the road, while I was in the air, I did take the opportunity to note where the exit from the field was. That's always always a top tip. Uh, try try and remember to do that. So there's actually a gap in the hedge at the bottom of this um, at the bottom of this corner. Uh, unfortunately, what I didn't notice from the air was that that gap in the hedge uh, does have an electric fence across it, um, which would have made getting the wing out a little bit tricky I'm sure would have managed um, but actually what happened was that uh, when my friend got across here to um, to pick me up it had actually cleared the mist on the at, at the airfield and the Sun was out on the airfield so what we did was we pushed the pushed the aircraft back out of the boggy bit at the side onto the firmer ground in the middle and um, took off back from there and flew back from the airfield Unfortunately, by that stage, uh, my um, camera had um, thought better of it. It was really cold, and the battery had obviously frozen up, so I didn't get the takeoff on the on the camera. It wasn't terribly eventful. It did take quite a long way to get going because this ground was fairly soft and the grass was quite long and it's not the most powerful engine on that, so it was a little bit reluctant to get off the ground. But um, but yeah got in the air and pretty much as soon as I gained about 100 feet I could see the airfield from there I was only less than a mile away from it I think um, so yeah all in all um, all worked out okay really um, I made a few mistakes in getting myself into the situation in the first place but I think after that um, handled it reached me safely and um, yeah got away without any any harm to myself any damage to the aircraft and I don't think I did any damage to any fields either so all good in all